for the rim, and then finally he got there, and he pumped it two times before he, before he dunked it. And he threw it in, and he pulled the rim down, and he came down, and he did like this, you know, because he knew, you know, that was world class right there. On the Wildcats. The warm fuzzies turned a little cool when the Beavers took a five-point lead one minute into the second half. But the U of A came back behind the inside play of Anthony Cook, who was five of six from the field and Tom Tolbert, who earned player of the game honors with his 21 points. The Wildcats then packed their bags and headed for Los Angeles. They warmed up for UCLA by scoring 103 points against USC, the most against the Trojans in 20 years. Sean Elliott led the attack with 19, followed by four others in double figures. The Cats set a Pac-10 record for three-pointers in a game with 13. Four of them came from Steve Kerr, who was a perfect five for five from the field. Craig McMillan dished out 10 assists, and the bench scored 34 points. That set up another big showdown with Walt Hazard and the Bruins. A win would give the Cats their second Pac-10 championship in three years. The Bruins were anxious to play the role of spoiler poly that they'd be able to handle us over there. The two teams traded punches through the early part of the first half. For the score. Oh, nice look. Joe Turner strikes right back. With four minutes left in the half, Kenny Lofton found Tom Tolbert open underneath. Showing good hang time for a 242 pound center. Tolbert's answered prayer gave the Cats a 12-point lead, but the Bruins cut it to only four at halftime. Then came on strong in the second half. Who Richardson teamed up with Kelvin Butler for back-to-back -back transition baskets. With the game winding down, Sean Elliott and Charles Rochelin spent two minutes trading baskets. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. Rochelin forced to take it. He's got it. With UCLA up by two, and the Wizard of Westwood looking on, Sean Elliott took center stage. Five seconds. Elliott with the shot. He's yes. got it. A two-point shot by Sean Elliott ties the ball game. Elliott had scored Arizona's last ten points in regulation, but he wasn't done yet. Opened up that time on the baseline, and Elliott continues his hot scoring. Anthony Cook added a bucket and a free throw, but UCLA would have one last chance to win. Here it is. Big Here goes. Now remember, it two ties and three wins it. You see the time remaining. Poo Richardson is going to go up for the shot. It's off the rim, and Arizona wins it. Just as they had done two years before, the Wildcats clinched the Pac-10 title by beating UCLA in the house that John so Wooden built. A strange. Steve Kerr would add another chapter to his storybook career. Prior to the Cats game against Arizona State, February 27th, a handful of ASU students taunted Kerr about the loss of his father. At first, Kerr was visibly shaken, but he soon developed a very hungry look in his eye. A Hollywood scriptwriter wouldn't have suggested what happened next. That's Curry, three pointer. No chances for the Cats. Kerr, another three pointer. NBA three pointer. He carries it. Kerr collected 20 first half points by connecting on all seven shots he took from the field. His performance was contagious. Anthony Cook, Tom Tolbert, Joe Turner. And Harvey Mason were also perfect from the field. As a team, the Cats shot a school record 75% in the first half and went on to burn the Devils by 28 points. Elliott Harrick shot. On rebound with a chance. The following week, the Cats gave Lute Olson a special gift. His 100th win as head coach at the U of A. Anthony Cook had his second consecutive perfect night by going six for six from the field. Joe Turner was also perfect from the floor, contributing 12 points off the bench. Arizona closed out the regular season two days later by honoring its four seniors prior to the game against the Washington Huskies. Lute Olson had started the same five players all season, but on senior night, 
he gave Joe Turner the sentimental nod over junior Anthony Cook. Needless to say, that made smiling Joe Turner smile even more. When you are smiling, when you are smiling, when you are smiling, the whole smiles with you. All the attention and adoration seemed to make Craig McMillan squirm a little. The Cats looked a little lethargic in the early going as they tried to shake off the effects of the long and emotional pregame ceremonies. The Cats led by only one point at the break, but they opened the second half with a 14-3 run, and it was business as usual at McHale Center the rest of the way. Sean Elliott led the way with 25 points. Steve Kerr chipped in 16 and ended the regular season with a phenomenal 60% mark from three-point range. So the Cats ended the regular season with 17 conference victories, tying a record set by the 1980-81 Oregon State team. Arizona had practically waltzed through the conference. Would they now be ready for postseason play? Well, I think obviously he had uh, taken it the uh, bucket pretty hard, and and this particular individual had had fouled him, but had fouled him hard, and basically in a few different words told him to, to not not bring the ball to the basket anymore. Uh, if there was anything that happened out of that was they got Tom Riled, and, and Tom's not an easy guy to handle if you get him riled. Tolbert scored a whole hum 15 points, but also grabbed nine rebounds and led the team in steals. Craig McMillan played sensational defense against Cal guard Ryan Drew, who shot the lights out the night before against USC. And Anthony Cook's two block shots earned him the Pac-10 career shot-blocking record. Sean Elliott led Arizona with 19 points as the Cats advanced to face Stanford, anxious to avenge their only Pac-10 loss of the season. Against the Cardinal, the first five minutes told the story. The Cats raced for a 20-4 lead behind the front-line dominance of Sean Elliott, Anthony Cook, and Tom Tolbert. Quiet Craig McMillan was outstanding. He scored eight very creative points and passed out six dramatic assists. How about that pass? Stanford just couldn't stop Sean Elliott. His season high of 32 points included a tournament record 15 of 16 from the free throw line. Arizona's 30th win equaled the Pac-10 record for victories in a season. The championship game the following day was a mere formality. Oregon State had virtually assured itself of an NCAA tournament bid. So Ralph Miller decided to rest center Bill Sherwood, who had a bad ankle sprain. Tom Tolbert exploited Sherwood's absence with 12 points and a career-high 13 rebounds. The Beavers never had a chance to slap their tails. Sean Elliott dazzled the national television audience. Look, four seconds, Steve Kerr could get that one to go, but Elliott follows. And Steve Kerr, who was once told he would never be quick enough to play point guard, was quick enough to score 15 points and pass out six quick assists. Basically, the Cats looked like they were in a hurry to get somewhere, like to the trophy presentation. Two days earlier, Anthony Cook, had been named a first-team All-Pac-10 player. Steve Kerr not only made the All-Conference and All-Tournament team, but collected Pac-10 All-Academic honors as well. Tom Tolbert's inspired play earned him a spot on the All-Tournament team. And Sean Elliott, the Pac-10's 1987-88 Player of the Year, was also named the tournament's most valuable player. <laughs> 